This video is about the Panasonic X920 and how to configure it and use all the menu settings uh, to change the things the way you want them. And the first thing to note is that Panasonic really have made this unduly complicated. Um, there are menus in sort of different places that you press different buttons for. It's not not the best user interface in the world. For example, um, if we look on the side here, there's the Wi-Fi button, that gets you into the Wi-Fi menus. They're not in the normal menus, which are accessed through the touch screen. And then you look at the screen and you think, well, where are the menus? Perhaps I have to press this manual, MNL button. And sure, that gets you some choices between the intelligent auto and the scene select, but it doesn't get you the setup menus. So the first battle on your hands is finding the setup menus. So perhaps you press down here and yes, you get a column of stuff. So let's flick through these. Come on, surely there must be something to do with menus. Hooray, there's the menus at last, but you've got both a quick menu and a menu menu. Well, which one do you want? And oh, it's vanished off the screen. It, it's just not intuitive. Anyway, the point is here under menu, finally you find what I would call the main setup menus for the camcorder. There's the general setup, there's the recording setup for video, and there is the stills picture setup. But wait a minute, there's another gotcha. Because yes, while this is to do with video and that's to do with stills, and you might think therefore you can set all the stuff you want to do with stills through that one, it only actually gives you two options because that's only to do with taking stills while shooting video. If you want to set up the camcorder using it fully for stills, which you can do, you need to switch this button into stills mode, and then this becomes a set of options. In fact, I'm going to do it. Let's flick that into stills mode, press menu again, and now you've got a whole set of options in here for taking still images. But also you'll see it still gives you this video camera icon with record setup, but it's not to do with video recording, it's still to do with taking stills because you've switched this to stills mode. It's just, even though that looks like a video camera, it's just phenomenally obtuse, I think. Now I've switched it back now to video mode because I'm going to treat this, it is a camcorder, let's treat it as a camcorder, forget stills for the moment, let's look at the normal camcorder menus. And we'll start with the setup menus. Well, display, five seconds or permanently on is whether you want icons on the screen to stay on or to disappear after five seconds so that you can see what you're filming. Um, if we just put them to on and exit out the menus, um, all these icons, as you can see here, it's a bit of a mess. Panasonic seems to have just thrown all the icons at the screen with no, uh, no care for how they look. But if you don't like that, go into the menus, a little bit contorted, change display to five seconds, and then the menus turn themselves off. If you want them back on again, you think, hold on a minute, I need to know how long the battery is and how long the recording time is. So just press the screen. They all come back on, they stay on for about five seconds, and then they disappear again. And again, just press the screen. Don't press the screen over here. This side is devoted to the little column of menu items you can bring up there. Um, so it doesn't work for bringing the, uh, bringing the icons back. Anyway, let's go back, to, um, go back to menu if we can and look at the next option. And that is clock set, which as you would expect, is telling the camcorder what the time and date is, should you want that recorded on your, uh, on your screen, and you will probably want it recorded in the file names anyway, so that you know when you shot certain things. World time allows you to set both a time for where you are now and also a destination. So if you're going on holiday, you can just set it to the uh, local time for wherever you are on holiday. I won't bother with that at the moment. And then date time on off is whether you actually want the date and time superimposed on your recording in the bottom right of the screen. So you can have just date, date and time, or have it off. So let's just select date and time and exit. And there you can see then, that's the classic home camcorder video setup with the date and time. Um, I don't want that on my recordings. I can't imagine many people actually want that on the recordings, perhaps holidays or something like that. So let's turn that off. Next option down, date format. Well, do you want it year, month, date, month, date, year, day, month, year? Fine, that's all fairly standard stuff. Now the zoom rec display on off. Uh, one of the options in this column of uh, buttons you can press when you're filming 
is a little zoom controller with you know telephoto and wide zoom and it can either disappear after five seconds or it can stay on permanently so if i put this to off for example and then wind around these menus till we find the zoom controller it's here somewhere there we go so we could now zoom using those controls and wide but if i let go of them after five seconds they too should disappear Yep, there we go. So if I now wanted to zoom using those buttons again, I'd have to first press that button to bring up the control. Now, if we'd left that, oops, hold on, gone too far. If we'd left that menu item, it's all a bit of a palaver getting to these things. If we'd left that set to on, then when we use the zoom, I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? There we go. When this comes on, we wait five seconds, and the controls will stay on screen, so we don't have to press that button again to get to them. Again, you may prefer them to disappear so that you can see what's in the corner of that image. Uh, so let's uh, go back to the menus. I, I really wish there were a quicker way to get to the menus, but anyway, set up, and I'm going to put that off. Now the OIS lock display works very similarly in that it's an icon on the screen that you can either have staying on or you can have it disappear after five seconds and you have to press that little menu button to get it back and the ois lock is uh, one of the features of the camcorder that allows you to sort of supercharge the stabilization i mean it normally has got a superb image stabilization anyway but while you are pressing the ois lock icon um, Let's have it. Um, let's have it stay on, and let's see if we can get that icon up. I can't remember where it is. It's around here somewhere. It's that one. This icon here. So with that now on, the icon's going to stay on the screen. And what happens when you press that and press and hold it? You get this additional icon, and it is doing a sort of super, super, super optical image stabilization. But you do have to keep your finger on the button. But it really does hold it tight. This is obviously not the best image. Um, to demo that with because the camcorder isn't moving anyway, but that's keeping that icon on the screen is what that menu item was all about. Now external display, if you plug this camcorder into a television using its HDMI, there's, a, there's an AV out socket here, uh, and an HDMI there. If you plug it into a TV, you might want all the information from the camcorder screen showing on the telly, like the battery life and the recording duration and so on and so forth. But you might simply want the telly to show the image that is being filmed by the camcorder. So in that case, you would turn it off. But if you want to see all the icons and so on, you can have them either in great detail or a simplified version of them. And the other reason you might want to turn this off, of course, is that if you connect this camcorder to an external recording device where you just want to record the image, obviously you wouldn't want to record the camcorder's icons, so you would turn that to off. Now we do uh, some power options. Um, economy for battery, on or off, means the camcorder will power down after, I think it's five minutes. With this option turned on, um, the camcorder, if left alone doing nothing, will shut itself down after five minutes. It's probably worth having that set on for the battery. But you can also set, do you want it to power down when you've got the mains plugged in? Well, by and large, I would have said no, because if it's powered on the mains, it's not gonna run out. So leave that to off. Quick power on is an on-off option that helps the camcorder start up from being powered off quicker, supposedly, within about a second. To be honest, the difference, I did test it, isn't really that great when you've got it on or off, but um, I like things to start up quickly, so I've left it switched on. And then there is another confusingly similar option called Quick Start. And if you have Quick Start switched on, which I'm not going to, when you shut the camcorder's lid, it only half powers down the camcorder instead of shutting it down as it has now, so that when you bring the lid out again, it starts up, again, really, really quickly. The drawback of having quick start on 
is that it continues to use battery power because the camera is only half shut down. So you might find that when you come back to opening the screen again, the battery has actually drained considerably. So I would recommend keeping that off, to be perfectly honest. Now let's scroll down to where we were, power options. Um, rec lamp on and off. There's a little red recording lamp um, under here. It's I think it's that one actually, um, which can come on when you are filming. Usually, I prefer people not to know that I'm filming them. Not now. That sounded a bit creepy. I realise, but I just find that if people are aware that a little red light is on, they become sort of camcorder shy, and it's kind of better for them not to have the reminder. Even if you've said to them, "Hey, let's film you." fine, just turn the little light off because they suddenly become really tense if there's a little light shining at them, um, even if it's just a little warning light. So I turn that off. The alert sound just means the camcorder beeps every time you do anything. It's really annoying, so I would um, strongly suggest switching that off. The select operation icons, one of the menus, in fact I'll go and find it, one of these menus um, has three, here we go, three selectable icons which you can choose and you can choose them from a little limited selection and you do that in that particular menu screen so hold on let's find it again select operation icons it says you can only have three because obviously we saw there were three positions there for icons and you can see i've picked these ones which is grid lines pre-rec and I don't use fade to black, but I, I had to select a third icon. To be honest, most of these are fairly useless. I think that's a tele macro. Um, that's a low light night shot mode, I seem to recall. Hold on, I've got a reference here of what those all mean. Yeah, that's some um, color night view mode. That's guidelines on the screen. That's the tele macro. That's a backlight compensation function. That is smile shot. It's this thing where it'll take a still photo if it spots a face smiling. Um, can't really think of a good use for that. Pre-record, very useful. It uh, continuously, even when you're not pressing record, it is actually continuously recording about three seconds worth of footage. And then when you press record, it dumps that three seconds worth onto the card. So it means you never miss a moment. For example, supposing you were going to film a, a, a tower block being demolished, you would run the pre-record, the explosion happens, you press record and you haven't missed it because it's already been recording three seconds prior to you pressing the record button. It's very, very handy and um, journalists like to make use of that one when filming people coming into and out of court um, so you don't miss a moment of the action. This is an intelligent contrast control, which is a way of the camcorder changing how it handles the shadows and the highlights in your image. It sort of squishes everything up to give you a better dynamic range. And finally, that's a fade in, fade out. In fact, I think I'm going to switch the intelligent contrast on. It doesn't like me trying to select a fourth one. I have to cancel that one and then select my fourth one. Enter. So those icons will now be available to me on that sub menu that we saw earlier. Power LCD is a, a boost to the brightness of the LCD. So if you're filming in daylight and you can't quite see it, turn that on and you can see it just went a little bit brighter there. It does use more battery power, of course, so for most situations you might be better off turning that off. Now there are more options here for the LCD. You can actually adjust the, the general brightness as well as having that little power LCD on as well. And you've got quite a number of steps here. I think it goes up to about 16 or something. And you can make this thing really quite bright. To be honest, I find the default brightness is fine, but your mileage may vary. You can, of course, also dim it down if you would rather save a bit of battery power. And you can change the color. If you don't like the color balance on the screen, you can change that. Again, I've just left mine to the default. Now the viewfinder, obviously the little viewfinder on the back here. You can do a, a limited setting with it. It can be dark, normal or bright, so not quite as versatile. HDMI resolution, again, is to do with when you're plugging the camcorder into a TV set or an external monitor. And you can either set the HDMI port to automatically detect what, it, what resolution it should be set at, or you can tell it it needs to be 1080p, 1080i or 576. 
for the most part, I would say leaving it on auto will probably be fine. Viera Link is a Panasonic specific thing where you can use some of their TV remote controls to control the camcorder. So if you had plugged your Panasonic camcorder here into a Panasonic TV and you wanted to play back the clips, instead of fiddling about with the camcorder, you, you turn the Viera link on and you should be able to control playback from the TV remote control. I don't have a Panasonic TV, so I'm not using that. TV aspect ratio, 16 by nine widescreen or four by three. Now that's not, let me stress, that's not what aspect ratio you're filming in. Whatever you film in this, it will be 16 by nine widescreen. This is simply telling the camcorder what aspect ratio the television you've plugged it into, if you have plugged it into a television is. So if you're plugging it into a, a modern TV, obviously it'll be widescreen. If you're plugging it into some old TV that's four by three, you should set this to four by three and the camcorder will output its signal with a letterbox on it to make it widescreen on the four by three telly. So once again, I stress that's not what you're filming in. You're always filming in 16 by nine. That's just telling the camcorder what type of telly you've plugged it into if you have indeed plugged it into a telly. Initial set, be careful with this one. It resets the camcorder, everything back to the way it was. I certainly don't want to do that, so I'm gonna say no. There's also a separate reset for the Wi-Fi settings, which simultaneously erases both the Wi-Fi's and this thing called the Lumix Club. And the whole Wi-Fi and Lumix Club, it's so complicated, I'm gonna to have to make a separate video about the Wi-Fi because it is mind-bogglingly I suppose clever, but also very, very complicated and fiddly. Anyway, I don't want to erase my Wi-Fi settings. Auto cursor position on off, it, just a simple thing that helps when you're typing in things, for example, into the Wi-Fi settings, it'll either automatically push the cursor one place ahead every time you press um, a, a, a character on the keyboard, or you can manually move the cursor one position ahead. So it's, it's just a little helpful thing when you're typing things in. Zoom ring set controls how you want this zoom ring at the front to, you might, for example, like that to be zoom in and that to be zoom out, or you might like that to be zoom in and that to be zoom out. And so you can simply toggle it between the two different ways by pressing those buttons there. Number reset restarts the file numbering and the way the, the files are all stored for both still images and iframe. iframe is one of the recording modes that the camcorder offers and each file has a number associated with it starting from naught and here you can just reset that numbering if you want to. Format media, fairly obvious. Do you want to format the little SDHC card? Um, no, I don't because I want to keep my recordings. Thank you very much. Media status tells me that I've used 5.1 gigabytes on my, I think it's a 16 gig card I've got in there, and that at the current recording mode of 1080-50p, I've got 55 minutes of space left on that card. Now, annoyingly, you can't go back to the menus here. If you exit, it takes you back to that screen. So you have to go all the way through these flipping menus again. Um, and I'll just go up that way. There we go, so media status we've looked at. The next screen down, version display, just tells you what firmware you're using in the camcorder so you can check on the Panasonic site, see if there's a newer version of the software. Version up is how you would upgrade the software. I think you end up putting the new firmware onto an SD card. You put the SD card in the camcorder and then you press version up. Demo mode and OIS demo are just things that they use in shops while putting the camcorder out for people to have a look at and it literally does a demo of the camcorder. And finally, language, of course, is what language you want the menus in. So that, is the setup menus.